Verse 18. I'll start at verse 15, and I won't look any higher than that, or I'll end up reading the whole book. 1 John 2, 15. How do you edit it out? I mean, it's tough. How do you edit it out? God breathes Scripture. The Bible says in the Old Testament, when they rediscovered the Word of God, they sat the whole nation down and read it from morning till night. This thing is life. This thing is health to your bones. This thing marks out a straight path to your feet. That when the whole world's troubled and on anti-depression medication, there's a song in your spirit. I used to sing that growing up in church. I got a song in my heart that the angels can't sing. Redeemed, redeemed. I have a song in my heart that the angels can't sing. Redeemed, redeemed. That, kind of, that meant redemption, that the blood of Jesus has separated me from this world already. That devils know who they can touch and who they can't, and that I'm on the do not touch. Touch at your own risk. Man, I get, the devil's so stupid, he's encouraged me when he's meant to discourage me. I was in India preaching, and we had to walk by one of the Hindu temples. I'm in a crowd of like 300 people. And the girl, the, whatever she is, full of the devil on a chain outside the temple. When I walked by and she saw me, I promise you, I was, just my, I was thinking about anything else. She went like this. I thought, wow, they know me. This is great. They didn't point at anybody else in the crowd. And I wasn't the only white person, so it wasn't like she was just pointing out tourists. I wasn't there on tourism anyway. I was there on kingdom business. Comes to the end of the chain and points at me and flexes her teeth. Uh, man, I don't know what the devil's trying to scare me. It made me happy. I thought, man, I don't feel anointed. I'm just walking. And there's an anointing on the inside of me that a demon can tell. Who is that? Who let him in here? Then get up and preach that night. <laughs> to 800 Hindus in an auditorium on what Jesus laid on my heart to preach. Preach on my name. What sense does that make in the natural? To tell a bunch of people about the name of your God. What do they care about your God? I don't have the right skin color. I don't have the right name on my passport. U.S., not India. What's going to make a bunch of people whose ancestors have worshipped the same gods for thousands of years switch to mine? Thankfully, Jesus isn't a dummy. He said, you go and tell them about me. And I watch over my word to confirm it and perform it. Stand up there preaching on the name of Jesus. Second, or Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, that because Christ left the heights of heaven, and hallelujah. 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 And, and died. I'm telling you, the rapture is not a mystery to me because when I feel the Holy, I can't stay on the ground. So I know one day it's just going to hit so hard, I'm going to jump and not come back down. I might do the Air Jordan on my way up. try to preach long enough that you can start feeling your spirit again. When Adam died, man's spirit died. There are people who have never felt their spirit. Then the word of God starts going forth and you feel it. That lady that cut my hair when I was a Bible college student in Rhode Island. What are you going to college for? Lady in her mid-twenties. I said, I'm going to Bible school to be a preacher. What do you preach about? Told her the basics of the gospel. Well, I, I cut another guy's hair. He's a Jehovah's Witness, and he says this. Well, he's wrong. I start telling her why he's wrong. Start quoting Scripture. She doesn't even know I'm quoting Scripture. And then she said, it's like stirring her up. She said, how do I know that he's not right instead of you? I said, because when he talks to you, you don't feel anything. But when I talk to you, you're doing everything you can to fight back tears. She turns her head and starts crying, which is a losing battle in a salon with mirrors everywhere. She said, Where can I, what do I need to do? I said, you need to be saved. My dad was preaching in the chapel at my Bible college the next day. I said, come here, my father. I called my father. I said, hey, the lady that cuts my hair is coming to church for the first time. So my dad, my dad doesn't like care about Christians. He just go after 
the one that got away. So when I, I shouldn't have told him that lady was coming. Those Bible college students all said, my dad's preaching at a Bible college chapel and preached a message entitled, The ABCs of Salvation, Accept, Believe, Admit You're a Sinner, Believe, and Confess That Jesus Christ is Lord. Is there anyone here who needs to give their life to Jesus Christ? One lady. Come on. All the Bible college students looking confused. Why are you telling us the basics? That we're training for the ministry. <laughs> what happened to her? What happened to her was she had never felt her spirit, but the word of God does not go into the head. It goes into the spirit of man and begins to quicken and make it alive. Can you say amen? amen. Man, I, I was 19. I worked at a, a call center selling bad mortgages, the 2007 Recession, you can blame on me because I had great sales. But uh, I, didn't even know what I, was, I didn't even know what a mortgage was. And the guys that were in the company said, the less you know, the better you'll do. Hey, whatever. <laughs> at least I didn't have to testify in court. I didn't know anything. Amen. I'm working at that job. And, and the, the guy that I thought ran the company, his name was Jeff. He ran the floor. There were 72 employees. So everybody in Rhode Island, they all went to like the normal colleges, you know, Johnson and Wales, whatever. So he goes, where do you go to college? Zion Bible Institute. What do you study there? Um, thought you'd be able to tell by the title, but the Bible. <laughs> so now he's like confused. You know, he keeps coming by my cubicle. Pause your screen out, which you'd get fired for pausing your screen. It was on an auto dialer. Supposed to call 900 people a day. Pause your screen. What do you mean you study the Bible? Uh, basically, I mean, there's no hidden meaning there. <laughs> What does the Bible say? So I started telling him what the Bible, then it's like the anointing took over. I started to realize this was not just like a line of questioning. The guy's troubled. Sinners are troubled. The Bible says that Herod that imprisoned John the Baptist, John the Baptist kept telling him in prison, you married your brother's wife and you're wrong. You'll go to hell for it. And the king kept calling him back to have him tell him again. You know why? Because even though what he said ticked him off in the flesh, that was the first time somebody spoke to him where he could feel his spirit. You're, going to, you're already feeling your spirit, and you're going to feel it, what it, not just to feel it, you're going to feel what it feels like to have it catch on fire tonight. And I'm telling you, when your spirit catches on fire, it's not a natural fire. Like when Jesus told the woman at the well, John 4, when you drink from this water, you'll never be thirsty again. When, when Hallelujah. When your spirit catches on fire, that fire doesn't ever have to go out. You, you don't have to come to a service like this and have God touch you and go back in your car, start listening to Hot 97 or Mix 101 or whatever you listened to before. You can have that fire lit in you like I had when I was six at a youth camp in Indiana that my father was preaching. When the overflow of those kids getting baptized in the Holy Ghost swept on me, it messed me up. I still haven't recovered. 30 years turned me into one strange little boy. Be out playing army with my friends, and I've been sitting in my dad's meetings every day. Desert storms going on. My little friends, hey, you hear about that war in Iraq? Yeah, want me to tell you how it's going to end? This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Then it's going to culminate in Armageddon. Then there'll be nuclear war. I don't want, to, I don't want that to happen. Then you need to get saved because Jesus will call us up out of here before it happens. Okay, what do I have to do to get saved? Bow your head. Get down on one knee. We're all there in Rambo paint with fake machine guns. I look like that guy from Africa with the child soldiers, except I was leading them to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Ten years old, 12 years old. I remember the one kid, his mother was mad as a hornet. She stormed. I still remember watching it. I mean, women have like an anointing to get mad. Like a man get a woman and she's had enough. You can like, there's like an aura around them. She's like. <laughs> she marches straight to my mother's house, knocks on the door. My mom opens the door. My mom, what a seasoned pro. The lady comes in. Can I talk to you? My mom said, sure. Mom had her get a seat. My mom's smart. Holy Ghost smart. Now, what do you want to talk to me about? Get in her face. Have a seat. 
makes tea, makes stuff to eat, while the lady's sitting down reading my mother the riot act. What every devil says to every Christian. You know, I think it's great that you have your beliefs. That you people should keep your beliefs to yourself. Your son said some things to my son that really has him scared. He wasn't scared. She was scared. <laughs> he was scared, and then I prayed with him, and he felt better. And what happened was he ran straight home and told Mommy, the world's about to end. <laughs> but I just took care of everything I need to take care of. I recommend you do the same. <laughs> so she starts talking to my mother. My mother just let her scream. I don't think it's right. You, my mother. Then I don't know what the heck happened. It was like this. It went from her yelling like that to her in tears saying how her husband's having an affair on her. And she just found out. And she doesn't know what she's going to do. And my mother reaching her hands across the table and praying with her. And her praying. What a, the de when I tell you the devil is a first class stooge. I've cited several examples just tonight. I could cite examples all night long. The devil sent that woman over there. What a mistake. I promise you it, wa it wasn't 20 minutes from her going mad as a hornet to holding my mother's hands. Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for my sins. I believe in my heart you raised Jesus from the dead then hugging my mother, then starting to come to church with us. I'm telling you, all my little friends in that neighborhood, it's an anointing, man. The Bible says that power that Jesus gave us, it's not to survive the things that are in the world. It is that while we are here, the same way Jesus will destroy the Antichrist personally, the spirit of God that's on the inside of us, it doesn't contend with the Antichrist spirit. It destroys the spirit of Antichrist. That's why the devil has made it his number one goal, to shut America down. Your pastor wrote, that America gives six and a half times more to missions than the second closest nation. Then look at Texas. Why there's such an assault on Texas? Because out of America, the godly root is in Texas. Preachers went all through here from the 20s up through the 50s, up through the 70s and 80s, and kept the godly seed in the people here. So what flies in New York City, what flies in Vermont, what flies in Seattle, what flies in Portland, what flies in San Francisco, it's never been able to take hold here. And listen, and you know what this week's about? This week's making sure, devil, you've never been able to set up shop in Texas and you never will be able to set up shop in Texas. This city is claimed for the kingdom of God. These people are claimed for the kingdom of God. We're not going down with the ship. We are the remnant called to bring revival. Stay on your feet. First John 2. Put your hand on your belly, your right hand. That's where your spirit is. Jesus said, in that day, rivers of living water will flow out of your belly. Your spirit's not in your head. That's why when you get convicted, your stomach tightens up. That's why when you, get a, you don't get a head feeling, you get a gut feeling. That's why when some pervert is full of the devil, an unsaved mother still feels something in her belly. Stay away from that man. Because there's a spirit on the inside of you. If you live to please this flesh, 
You'll have spent all your energy gratifying something that's got 80, 90 years. He that sows unto the flesh will reap corruption after the flesh. But he that sows to the Spirit shall reap a harvest of everlasting life after the Spirit. You got about 90 minutes of that sown in you right now of the Bible, Holy Ghost preaching in your spirit. I pray you get more messed up than I did at six. Pray it makes you peculiar in your neighborhood. I pray it makes you peculiar at your job. Weird things start happening. You can't help get promoted. That there's a law in your company that you can only have one raise every six months and you get three in four months. And when HR comes to your boss and says they violated company policy, then they have a board of directors meeting to rewrite company policy to make an exception for you. Because the Bible says you can know something. Think of all those weak amens. That's why the church stays poor. But I'm going to tell you something. Isaiah 55 says, God's word will not return void. When you lose something, a word like that, that word looks for a place to nest. So you can be like the king and say, I don't think so. You can be like the king's assistant and say, I don't think that could happen, even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. Or you can be like the two lepers that say, why sit we here till we die? I take a hold of that word, and you can go and raid the wealth of the wicked, bring it into your hands and build the kingdom of God in this last hour. Stay on your feet. I want to pray for you soon. 1 John 2, 18. Dear children, the last hour is here. You've heard that the Antichrist is coming. And many such Antichrists, small a, have appeared. Hitler, Alexander the Great, could list off a ton. The devil's always had to have somebody ready because he doesn't know when we're getting caught up out of here. Many antichrists have appeared. From this we know that the last hour has come. We're not in the, everybody say this, we're not in the last days. Say we're in the final hour of the last days. And I want to tell you this because in a crowd this size, you know this is true. If it was a crowd a third the size, it would be true. There's always people that come to a meeting like this that think, man, I've wasted so many years. I blew it. I wish I'd have known about this sooner. Well, you didn't, so tough luck. But you know about it now. Jesus told a story for such people. He said a father had two sons. He told them both to do something. One said, I will, but then didn't. The other said, I won't, but later changed his mind and did. Which son pleased the father? They said the second one. Don't let the devil get you thinking about the years you wasted. Because if you wasted 55 years and you get saved tonight, it would be better than being a preacher's kid like me. What what would happen? What would happen if I did everything I've done up until now and then backslid tonight? My 35 years of service for the Lord, I'd go to hell as if I was a heroin addict from cradle to the grave. It's not what happened before tonight. It's what happens from tonight onward. I said, it's not what happened before tonight. It's that God will put his hand on you tonight. And the Bible says, he'll restore unto you the years that the canker worm has eaten. Samson messed up. Cost him his eyesight. Cost him his freedom. But then his hair began to grow back, and the Spirit of the Lord came back upon him. And he said, Lord, let me do one last thing for you. Let me do one last great thing for you. That little boy, they assigned to him to lead him around. He said, hey, son, can you do me a favor? Find out which one of these pillars are the load-bearing pillars for the whole building. And they're these two. Good. Put my hands on them. Excellent. Now, if I were you, I'd run home. And he gave a push. And he collapsed the main hold of the devil in one action. Don't you get bedded down in discouragement, talking about what went wrong, I messed up too. No. Whatever came alive in Samson comes alive in you tonight. Where you say, from this day forward, 
I will make the devil rue the day that he didn't kill me when he had me. Because for this, they shouldn't have gouged out his eyes. They should have took his head off. And the devil might have gouged out your eyes. The devil might have messed something up. But I'm going to tell you, if he was smart and he's not, he would have killed you. But he didn't. He couldn't even keep you out of this Holy Ghost meeting tonight. So with, he, listen, there's a lot of you. The truth is, you should be encouraged. He already did hit you with his best shot. And it couldn't even keep you out of this meeting. And you're going to get lit on fire tonight and spend the rest of your life busting his head, kicking his teeth, making him rue the day that he didn't take you out when you had the chance. That is your story from this day forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 20, but you're not like that. Say, I'm not like that. I don't have the Antichrist spirit. I can't gel with what they gel with. What happens when you get the Holy Spirit on the inside of you? You become like Moses. His mother only had him for three and a half years, Jacobed. And whatever she did with him from zero to three and a half, as long as he lived in Egypt, he didn't like their music, he didn't like their food, He didn't like their parties. He didn't like their alcohol. She put something in Moses that he chose to suffer the oppression of the children of God. Chose, not forced. Choosing to suffer the oppression of the children of God, Hebrews 11, rather than sharing the fleeting pleasures of sin in Egypt. God can do something in your spirit tonight. God will do something in your spirit tonight where you won't try to live better. The taste for sin will be burnt out of your spirit and mouth. And a, an insatiable hunger and thirst for God will be birthed in you. As easy as it was to live for the devil before tonight, it'll be twice as easy to live for God. Because you won't be trying to be better. There will be a fire in you that draws you. Every time you feel like clapping from here on out, just lift your hands and begin to worship God. Instead of clapping, just lift your hands and worship God. Open up your mouth and thank him. Thank him that he's going to put a spirit in you tonight where you're never going to get, you have an anointing from the Holy One. You don't have to get anointed. You can have an anointing and just stir it up from that day forward. Go ahead, take 20 seconds with your hands lifted. Open up your mouth, just say, I love you, Jesus. Thank you for filling me with the Holy Ghost. Just speak to God. Don't let your mouth be silent. Don't let somebody pray for you. Say your own thing to God. I desire you. I hunger and thirst after you. I want your power. I desire your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say tonight, I receive the anointing. Put your hands down real quick. If, if, you go to, if you preach at traditional churches, which most of you don't preach, but I can just tell you, when we're in the back room like I am with Pastor Gene, they'll say, well, let's pray before the service starts. Father, anoint our speaker tonight. Like the anointing something you, like Clark Kent and Superman. You step into it, preach, go back to normal. I'm going to tell you, in this day and age, that's a dangerous way to live. The Bible doesn't say you'll get an anointing. The Bible says ye have an anointing. So when God fills you, Jesus said, I'll be with you always. I'll not leave you comfortless. Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. He stays unless you kick him out. He stays, and then it's your job to fan him into flames. And the intensity with which you pursue the actions that it takes to fan the flames of the Holy Ghost on the inside of you is what's going to determine the course of your life, not what God wants for you. So tonight, God's going to fill you. This revival, you're going to hear the things out of the Word of God that he made available for you to take that C4 and blow it up on the inside of you. You won't live in this hour like a normal man. When Philip baptized that Ethiopian eunuch and then was caught away to another city, was that after the rapture in heaven or was that in this age? So you don't have to live like a normal man, do you? You can live... That theme you folks have been having, that's actually a prophetic theme all over the world. Days of heaven on earth, heaven on earth. That's what Philip lived in. Baptize an Ethiopian eunuch and get caught away to another city. 
When they drag Paul out of the city and stone him to death, and he pops up from the rubble and says, who are we burying? Uh, you. Well, I'm not dead, so pick somebody else. And then walk to his next meeting? That, that ain't normal. That's not a man. Men can't get caught away, be in another city. That's God releasing his power upon his people. Because the Bible says in Romans 5, where wickedness abounds, does it abound? Have another touch in the, in the rose. Lift both hands. In the name of Jesus. Have another drink. Filled in Jesus' name. That's it, right through you. Does wickedness abound? Does wickedness abound right now? Then if God said that he's going to release a grace and power that's greater than that wickedness, then you watch what the church is going to do in these next six months. The devil is going to take a beating that he won't soon recover from. I'm so glad you watched the program today. You know, all of the problems that are going on in America, God has a solution for it. And God has a solution for you. There's nothing the devil's done that God can't do something about it right now. And that's why we've put this program on the air. I wanted you to hear the word of God, and I wanted to have a chance to pray with you at the end for you to have God change your life by the power of the Holy Ghost like he has for me. And so if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, that's step one. You need to get transferred out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light. And God's going to do that right now. Say this out loud right where you're watching. Say, Heavenly Father, I'm sorry for my sins. Thank you for forgiving me. I believe in my heart. You raised Jesus from the dead. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Fill me with your power. Where I was weak, make me strong. In Jesus' mighty name, I am saved. Say it. I am forgiven. God is my Father. Heaven is my home. And I will not turn back. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that with me, I want you right now to go on RevivalToday.com and click the button, I just got saved. Fill out that form, and I'm going to mail something to you that's going to help you in your Christian walk. I'm not going to solicit you for money. It's no scam. I want to see you in heaven and meet you on that great day where we stand with the Lord Jesus Christ. And man, there'll be great rejoicing. And I look forward to seeing you then. Check my schedule as well, RevivalToday.com. And the next time I'm in your area, I'll look forward to seeing you. Until then, I am Evangelist Jonathan Shuttlesworth, and I'll see you next time. This is Revival Today.